friends, I'm Rosa, welcome. So, few things before I get started with this book haul. As you can see, I have a lot of books. Well, you might not be able to see them. I'm trying this new thing with the angle, but I don't know if it's working. Let me know though. But I have about 59 books to go through today. I'm gonna do my best to not talk for one minute about each of them, but I'm not gonna make any promises. I'm gonna do my best though. Second thing is I'm recording this on my birthday, which means that I might look a little bit tired because it's been a long day. Let's just collectively choose to ignore that if my eyes turn really pink at some point. I just, I'm gonna pretend like it's not happening. Yeah. And third, you may be able to find links in the description box today, but I'm not sure that I can actually fit them all in there because 59 books is a lot to link to. It's a lot of characters in the description box is unfortunately not limitless but what I will do is I will add chapters to the timeline so if you want to know about YA fantasy we start out with those but if you'd rather know about like contemporary romance you can click on a chapter here in the timeline underneath the video and I think that's all I gotta say so these are mainly birthday and also Christmas purchases. They are pre-orders that I've received throughout December and also January. And they're books that I've bought in like sales, so like Black Friday, December sales, January sales, because for some reason there are sales happening all the time. So I have a lot of books. As a result of that, I've accumulated a lot of books throughout the last month. <laughs> But also, it's been both Christmas and my birthday, so I feel like I'm excused. Anyway, there are some special editions in these stacks of books that are from both Fairy Lou, Dilla McCrae, Owl Crate, and also The Broken Binding, so I will be leaving links to those four websites in the description. But enough said, let's, uh, let's get started. So we're starting out with YA Fantasy. The first one I got is Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong, and this is the Fairy Loot Edition. So it comes with very nice stencil edges that look like this. I cannot remember what the signs say, so don't ask me. Super cool end papers, also different in the back. They look like this. It has nice foiling on the naked cover that looks like that. And it's signed by Chloe Gong as well. So this takes place in the same universe as these Violent Delights. I don't fully know what it's about though other than that. I believe that the characters in these Violent Delights, at least one of them, will be showing up in this book, but I could be wrong about that. <laughs> if I remember correctly. But all I know then is that it takes place in Shanghai, and I'm not really sure what happens other than that because I've decided not to read the synopsis. Really wanted this edition from Fairy Loot though, so I jumped on it when it was on sale. I got two editions of The Luminaries. This is a book by Susan Dennard. I have the Illumicrate edition, which is also the first one that they've done for Daphne Press. It has really nice printed edges that look like this. A redesigned cover, which is super foily, as you can probably tell. The back looks like this and is also super foily. End papers look like this in the front and the back. And it has this like stunning foil design on the naked cover, which if you have read the book, you would recognize it. It says Nightmare Compendium, the Comprehensive Guide to Hemlock Falls. Oh, Hemlock Falls Nightmares, because that's what this book is about. It's about nightmares that are haunting or hunting in this forest. This book is also signed by Susan Dennard. And as for the Owl Crate edition, it has an exclusive cover which has been changed from like green, yellowish to blue and silver. It has a bit of a design on the back as well. It has blue sprayed edges, dark blue. I don't have any sprayed edges like this, so that's cool. It has a foiling on the naked cover that looks like this also has end papers that look like this, is also signed by Susan Dennard, and has inside dust jacket art that looks like this. So this is Jay and Winnie. <laughs> As for this book, we follow our girl Winnie who is living in a community that have basically taken it upon themselves like generations ago to clear the forest that they live close to from nightmares that haunt or hunt the forest at night. So they train to be hunters. A lot of the younger people though are like clearing the forest to start out with, which is what Winnie is doing. 
her family has been exiled almost from this community after her father kind of did a double agent thing, which is hard to explain because it's not really explained in the book so far. It's the first one in the trilogy, so hopefully more information will be included about that in the sequel, but we'll see about it. But as a result of this, Winnie really wants to clear her family's name, and so she decides to partake in the trials to become a hunter. And things don't really go as planned. In fact, they don't really go well at all. So she ends up asking this like up-and-coming star hunter whose name is Jay, who's also an old friend of hers, if he can train with her so she can get better and actually pass the trials. And that's what the first one is about. It's a cute story. I've already read it. I liked it. Then we have The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. This is the Owl Crate edition, so it has a completely redesigned cover. The back looks like this. I quite like this like black and white look. I'm not gonna lie. It has foiling on the naked cover and this says non omnis moria, which means I will not wholly die, something like that. There's also a design on the back of a lighthouse. Don't know what that's about, but I'll figure it out. Also has really cute end papers that look like this. And it's also signed in silver by Kelly Andrew, which I love when I love when authors do that, where they match the signature, like the pen they use, with the book in some way. It's so satisfying, so thank you for that. This also comes with inside Dust to Jacket Art, where we have our two characters. It really fits the book very well, this gray look. As for this book, I'm confused every time I summarize it, but we follow a girl who is deaf and she wants the opportunity to kind of prove herself because she feels like other people often look down on her because she's deaf. So she's invited or accepted into the school where they teach the students how to travel between worlds. And she's been told to stay clear of this one guy who's unfortunately taken a bit of an interest in her. So some years ago, this guy died and was brought back to life after a while. And I can't really fully, I don't really fully know why, but the two of them are really drawn to each other. So despite being told to stay away from each other, stuff starts happening at the school and the two of them have to team up to figure out what is actually going on. So um, that's The Whispering Dark. For Christmas, I got the collector's edition of Caravel from one of my friends. So the front looks like this. It has a die cut right here, so there's like a hole you can see, yeah. The back looks like this. The book itself looks like this in the front and this in the back. And I swear my book doesn't look like this in the interior, like my normal... Is it called interior? Am I speaking house terms right now? <laughs> anyway, my normal edition of Caravel. I love having collector's editions of books that I really like, and I loved Caravel when I read it, so I was very excited that she sent this to me for Christmas. She's also given me Throne of Glass and A Court of Thorns and Roses, so it's kind of become like a thing by now. As for the Caravel trilogy though, the first one is about two sisters who go off to an island to get away from their father, and on this island there's this like magical show happening that people partake in and they have to go through different... I almost want to call them trials, like different games and such. So when the sisters arrive, or they don't arrive at the same time, when the second sister, the big sister, arrives, she finds out that her little sister has actually been taken by the guy who like runs this show, runs this magical thing on the island. So she's gonna be a part of the game, and Scarlet our lead girl sets out to free her sister from the game maker. And all while this is happening, she has to keep in mind that a lot of the stuff that is happening in the book are supposedly just illusions. But are they? She doesn't really know who to trust and everything's kind of confusing. It's a super cool world. Love the whole concept of it. It's very whimsical and very magical, so. I also got the Illuminate edition of the Bone Witch trilogy. Yes, got that right. Okay, so we have the Bone Witch, the Heart Forger, and the Shadow Glass. These have redesigned covers and also stenciled edges. Mine are very off-centered, but it is the way that it is. And each book also has the map as end papers. So this one, this edition, this book, the first one is purple, so the map is purple. It's also signed by Rin Chupeko. And each book also has a foil design on the naked cover. The heart forger looks like this. The edges look like this. 
And if you would like to see the foil design on the naked cover, it looks like this. White books kind of show off or show up a little bit weird on my cam, so apologies, but I can't really do anything about it. The last book, The Shadow Glass, looks like this. Has edges that looks like this. They're very nice. And the foil design looks like this. It's more like a quote than a design, if you will. So these books are about a girl with necromancy powers that are very, like, she's very powerful, but she's also feared because she has these powers. So to get better at her using her powers and also to be able to control them a little bit better, she goes off to this place to train. All this both so she can indeed control the powers better, but also so she can actually protect her family. And in the meantime, there is also war breaking out between the kingdoms in this world. So it's about our girl basically just becoming stronger, learning about her powers and possibly gaining new powers and war, as you know, a lot of fantasy books. But I'm very excited to read The Bone Witch, which I'm gonna do soon, I think. Yes. Next up, we have the fairy loot edition of Cruel Illusions by Margie Fuston. This has a completely redesigned cover, and I'm so happy that it does, because I hate the UK cover for this book so much. The back looks like this. It has the most stunning edges that look like this. They're printed. So gorgeous. I have a thing for rose like rosy kind of patterns on edges, I think. It has a foiling, very delicate, very subtle foiling that looks like this on the naked cover, which is black for a change. I think that's quite cool. Front end papers look like this, and the back end papers look like this. And this is also signed by Margie Fuston. Did I say Margie? Margie? <laughs> that's one thing you'll learn throughout this video. I don't know how to pronounce names, so bear with me, <laughs> but I am doing my best. In this book, we follow a girl who, after watching her mother get killed by a vampire, decides to become a vampire slayer or a hunter. She also happens to have like a connection to magic tricks, which she's really good at and very interested in. So one day she goes to this like carnival circus kind of situation where there's a group performing magic tricks. She has this feeling that there's more to their show than they are letting on, but people seem to be really like sucked up in it, loving it and all that stuff. And then after the show, the guy, one of the guys in this group performing, comes up to her and asks her to come back the next day. She does, hesitantly so, but she ends up doing it because she's just kind of drawn to this group and what they're doing. And as a result of this, she is drawn into the group as well and then brought to this secret society of magicians that are also vampire hunters. And she has to go through a trial to actually be accepted into this society. And as she's going through the trials, things are turning weird. Things are not as they seem. And yes, this is a standalone. I did not love it, I've read it, but not my favorite read of last year, not gonna lie. The edition, quite like it though. Speaking of secret societies, I have the Alcrate edition of Bloodmarked. I don't actually know what's exclusive about this cover, other than I think the title might normally be another color, I'm not really sure. What I do know though is that there is foiling on the naked cover, which says two. The end papers look like this, and it's also signed by Tracy Dion. Plus, there's some inside dust jacket art that looks like this. I believe this is actually reversible. It is. So if I want to turn it inside out, I could do that. So the first one, Legendborn, is about our girl. Oh, her name was Bree. I was like second guessing myself anyway. <laughs> whose mother died a while ago, but she's still carrying the grief and dealing with that on a daily basis when she is accepted into university or college or whatever it's called. And so while she's there, she's just kind of like trying to live her life as a college student. I actually think it might be a high school, but like she stays there for some reason. Anyway, they have dorms at this high school. So on her first night there, her and her roommate decide to go out and just have some fun, trying to let loose, trying to be normal students. Something happens and she sees stuff that she's not supposed to. There are monsters in the air. She also sees some people hunting these monsters and kind of starts to question what the heck is going on. And after a little while, she actually comes across this secret society that has roots in the legend of Arthur, 
So Arthur and his knights around the round table. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Anyway, it has roots in that. And so she decides because she has a feeling that the society might have some answers about her mother's death these uh, last year or whenever it happened. She decides to infiltrate it to get her answers. And when she does, things are quite weird and not as they seem. And I feel like this is very close to cruel illusions all of a sudden. But anyway, <laughs> no vampires in that one. Well, there might be. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like there, there is. It's more like demons than vampires in, in Legendborn. Moving on. So recently I got Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray, but honestly, other than it being YA fantasy and I've heard really good things about it, I don't actually fully know what it's about. It says on the bag, Lakoza was once a city of magic. Now magic is nothing more than a myth. There's something about a zoo as well, but I don't really know what it's about other than that. And to be honest, I feel like this is about a lot of my books. I don't really want to know. I just want to go in blind. So, but I have it and I've heard good things about it. Feel free to read the synopsis if you want to. <laughs> I also got The Poison Season by Mara Rutherford, which is in the Owl Crate edition, so it has a completely redesigned cover. The back looks like this. It has a little bit of a quote on it. The naked cover has the original cover art on it, which is really, really nice. And then on the back, it has another quote. The end papers are also exclusive to this edition. I hope you can see the pattern, but camera and lighting and stuff. And in true all crepe fashion, it also has inside dust jacket art that looks like this. And it's also signed by Mara Rutherford. Or Mara, maybe. See, I don't know how to pronounce names. It's a thing. So this is about a girl who lives in a bit of a, like a hidden community that lives in the forest. She's always been taught that outsiders are either exiled to the very dangerous forest or they get to be thrown into the poisonous lake. So outsiders, in other words, are very much not welcome into this community. She also knows that if her brother doesn't develop magical powers within the next year or so, he is going to be exiled as well and will, as a result of that, end up dying. One day though, she hears a stranger, an outsider, yelling for help because he is drowning in the lake. And so she knows what she's supposed to do in this situation, but actually ends up saving him. And as a result of this, she starts to learn a couple of things about her community that might actually put them in a different light than she first, you know, thought. It might change her opinion on the community. They might be more dangerous than she at first thought. And so that is the poison season. I also got The Stolen Air by Holly Black, which I know is about one of the characters from The Cruel Prince. A couple of years after he's like, taken away because I can't say that. That's a spoiler for The Cruel Prince. But one of the characters, he's a little boy in The Cruel Prince, so he's not a little boy anymore. But I don't actually know what the storyline is in this, so I am just gonna not say. I'm excited to read it though once I've finished the Folk of the Air trilogy, which I have not yet currently, but I will soon. Is there anything special about this? I don't think so. No, because this is the UK edition, so no fancy boiling or anything. But I got the Illumicrate edition on its way, so... That's pretty cool. I also got An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson used, which I was very excited about. Also because it's quite clearly not actually been read, which is always nice when you buy used books. So this book is about a girl who is a painter and being able to craft paintings is something that the Fae in this world are very much, an ability that they're very much interested in because they themselves are not able to paint because they will literally crumble into dust. So one day she is approached by one of the Fae princes. He wants her to paint a portrait of him and so she does. However, she paints it in a way that he doesn't like and he ends up bringing her to the Fae world realm, possibly. <laughs> And here she has to stand trial for doing that or for painting that painting of him in the wrong way. But when she gets there, it turns out that things are quite weird. She might also be falling a little bit for this this prince and vice versa as well. And this might not sit well with the Fae people either. And so um, things are dangerous. And that's all I know, I think. So yeah. I have literally just one YA sci-fi, which is Skyward Flight by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the collection of short stories that he's done in the Skyward 
series, but they've been combined into one book. I've not read either of them, but I really wanted the UK edition. I have all three Sky Ward books that are out. I have read the first one, so I will get to the short stories and I will get to Star Sight and also Cytonic eventually, <laughs> but I just really wanted this edition to go with the rest of them. Cannot tell you anything about the short stories though, so that is the thing. But I'm very excited to have it. I really loved Sky Ward, so we'll most likely like that one as well. Oh, but I do want to show you the end papers actually, because they do look a little bit nice. They're not just plain colored, which honestly more books to serve nice end papers if I may say so. So today on my birthday I got the whole Throne of Glass series in hardbacks. <laughs> I have them in paperback. I've had some of them for like closing in on seven years but I've been wanting the hardbacks because this is like one of my favorite series ever and so my gosh this is heavy okay. My mom got them for me though so thank you mom thank you so much. Um <laughs> <laughs> These are so heavy. I'm so excited to have them though. They're very, very nice. But in this series, I'm gonna hold up Kingdom of Ash because I cannot hold this up for a long time. My gosh, it's falling over. Everything is falling. Ah, ooh, that hurts. But in this series, we follow Selena Sardothian, who is the world's most dangerous assassin. She has been taken by the crown prince, brought to the capital of the kingdom or whatever, where the king is throwing like a tournament sort of thing to find his new assassin, so an assassin that is supposed to work for him. And Selina is supposed to be like the contestant that is representing the crown prince. As she gets there though, things are turning weird in this tournament and there might be some secrets, the king might be keeping some secrets, and I don't think I can say more than that. Um, I just, the first two books, like I'm not gonna lie, the first two books, not the best, but I love this series so much. So I'm super happy to to have them as hardbacks and I really want alternative dust jackets for them as well, but we'll see once I get around to buying them. The only thing I have on this one is that there's a little bit of foiling on the uh, Kingdom of Ash one, which I believe is actually the SJM signature. And then I've completely, I've literally just thought about this sword yesterday and right now I cannot remember the life of it or the name of it for the life of me. Ascalon? No, that's not it. That's priory, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so, but there's a sword. That's important. I just can't remember the name of it right now. But oh my gosh, this is a lot of hardbacks to keep up. So I'm gonna put them away. <laughs> Ouch. I can't wait to reread these and then tap them all over again because yes, I just am not ready to do it yet, but I will. <laughs> I also, speaking of SJM, I got the last one of the heart bags in Echo Tar, which is A Court of Wings and Ruin. I kind of also want alternative dust jackets for these, but I haven't decided, I haven't settled on which ones yet. But anyway, in this series, we follow Feyre, who is a human. She's living in a cottage with her two sisters and her disabled father, and she's the only one who's able to actually provide for them because she likes to hunt and she's good at it. They live on the border to the Fey realms, or the Fey lands and the fae in this world are very very dangerous. This means that every time she goes out to hunt she's actually in serious danger of running into a fae but she's also been told that if she ever spots a fae she has to run away. However one day she does spot a fae. She doesn't run away. She ends up shooting it right through the eye, killing it. And as a result of this a very powerful fae comes to her family's cottage and takes her away, brings her to the fae lands, specifically the spring court, where she learns that things are weird in the fae lands. There might be something about a curse and she finds herself kind of wanting to help them lift it and learns a lot of things about the fae and stuff. Yes. The first one, again, not my favorite, but I love the second one and I love the other books in the series as well. So it's probably like, I don't, I feel like I could say that it's my favorite series, but it might be another one tomorrow, but right now it's definitely this one. So I'm very excited to have the full set of the heart facts now as well for that one. Then I have, I think, well, I don't know if this would be considered new adult. It's kind of like a fine line between new adult and adult, isn't there? It's a little bit difficult, but adult fantasy at least. I could have also put this under historical fiction, but it is A Restless Truth by Freya Marsk, and it's the sequel to A Marvelous Light. This is also the Illuminate edition, so it has a transparent dust jacket. As you can see, the ladies are going away. Yep, they're not in the picture anymore, but now they're back. <laughs> it also has these super cool printed edges right here. And I believe 
It's also signed by Freya Mars. And it's green, which fits the book. I just love when they do that. <laughs> I don't really know what this is about though. I can't remember what A Marvelous Light is about, but I really wanted the sequel to match it, so I got it. I also have Halfway to the Grave by Janine Frost, which is the first one in the Night Huntress series. I can't remember what this is about at all, other than our lead characters have vampire or something, but that's literally all I can remember right now, and I'm completely okay with that. This is fantasy romance, I think. I think it's also urban. I can't remember. It says gothic romantic, action-packed, funny, and sexy. And I need that in my life. So yeah, I think I'm right, like, right in the center of a fantasy romance phase. So that's a thing, just so you know. I also have a Fire Anthes by Rebecca Ross in the Illumicrate edition. So this has a redesigned cover. Gorgeous stenciled edges. A lot of foiling both on the front of the book but also the back. I love that this hardcover is, uh, this might actually be an unpopular opinion, but I love that it's pink. And it also has these cute end papers. Plus, it's signed by Rebecca Ross. So this is the sequel to A River Enchanted. Also means that this is the last book because it's a duology. In A River Enchanted, we follow two characters, Jack and Adira. So Jack has left the island he grew up on a while ago, but has been called back because he's needed on the island. His musical prowess is needed. He's really good pl at playing a harp. And this is because girls are going missing on the island. So they need Jack to come back and play for the spirits so they can get answers to where the girls have gone missing to. Like, where where are they? Are they still alive? Are they good? Are they well? Et cetera, et cetera. When he gets there, he finds out that he's not been called back by the person that he thought he was, but it turns out to actually be his childhood nemesis. And the two of them have to work together to figure out what actually happened to the girls and where are they and can they get them back? So this is also Scottish inspired or it takes place in like a fictional Scotland. There are some about like, clan wars as well and a lot of different factors, so. I also have Jade War, which is the sequel to Jade City, which I've not read. Don't know much about, but I was very confident that I was gonna love it, so I decided to get the sequel. But what I do know about Jade City, though, is that we are dealing with crime families in something that's inspired, like a place that's inspired by China, and they are at war because they're fighting over Jade, and Jade has like a magical component to it. It makes whoever's wearing it or using it stronger and faster and etc etc. And so that's what these books are about. But I'm very confident that I'm gonna love the first one so I decided to get the sequel. This I don't really know what it's about but it was on sale. So <laughs> I got The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie which I think is grimdark fantasy. But um yeah. Cannot tell you what it's about though. Last four we have of the adult fantasy. We have A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland, which I honestly don't really know what it's about either, other than we follow two two guys. It says one lives for his kingdom and one lives for his prince. But I bought this because it's the broken binding edition and they were selling out and I panicked. <laughs> I think they were on sale specifically and they were selling out. So I was like, I need to grab it because it's stunning. It has these very stunning printed edges right here. It's also a an exclusive cover. It's a colorway change as far as I can remember. It has very 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 neon <laughs> bright yellow and papers but it comes with this stunning foil on the naked cover that I am obsessed over so and it is also signed right there but I cannot tell you what it's about. Shall we do the very short the very short synopsis? To save their kingdom, will they sacrifice their hearts? Sounds like it's a, a heartbreaker, to be honest. I also got Elantris by Brandon Sanderson for Christmas. My dad, because I can't tell you what this is about, I'm gonna tell you this instead. Did I just say inset? Instead. <laughs> My dad gave me this, but he initially had actually ordered the Spanish version. I don't speak Spanish and I can't read it. I've never had a Spanish lesson in my life. So it was a bit of a surprise when I got it. However, we sorted it out. He returned it and I got this elsewhere because it was never available on the site that he wanted to purchase from. It's all good now, but this is the uh, anniversary edition, so it has 10,000 words of bonus content. And I really wanted it, because I just, I don't know, I really wanted it. This is five, 500 pages, like, it's so thin. I don't get it. It's the same thickness as An Enchantment of Ravens, which is like 280, but there's something I love about my Brainerd Sanderson books, it's that the pages are 
so thin. They're so delicate. I love it. It's so satisfying. <laughs> but yeah, kind of want to read this in 2023, but we'll see if I get to it. But super exciting. And then today for my birthday, I got The Silmarillion by Tolkien. And this is the, is it called? A illustrated anniversary edition, I think. Is it not an anniversary edition? It might just be a collector's edition, but it's illustrated by Tolkien. So I think he's done the cover, but I'm not entirely sure about that. So don't quote me on it. It has, it's a turn upside down. I do not read Elvish. I think this is the right way to turn it. Anyway, it has stenciled edges with some kind of elvish quote on it that I cannot read, but I'm sure I'll figure out what it means when I've read the book. It also has foiling on the naked cover. I think I've just realized after lifting all of these books that this is actually quite heavy. And by illustrated, by the author, they mean it literally has illustrations done by Tolkien in the book. So here's another one, which is so nice. It also has a ribbon bookmark that I'm just gonna put back in its place. But it's there, just so you know. So this is like in the same world as Lord of the Rings, but I don't really know what the book itself is about, actually. I've just heard that it's really good. I know that I need to read, or that it's recommended at least, to read The Lord of the Rings before you go into this one, just because it's a little bit heavier. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I'm very excited to, to learn more. Well, both to learn more about this world, but also to read this at some point. And it's stunning. My sister got a matching book, so we're gonna read them together which is super cool. And then I got the matching edition of Lord of the Rings as well, and this is all three books. So Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and The King Returns. No, The Return of the King. That's what I meant. <laughs> and this means that this also has stenciled edges that look like this. And this is literally what it says on the ring in the book. So... I hope that's the right way to turn it. I think it is. I'm fairly certain that I'm right. It has a little bit of foiling. It's Soren's eye on the naked cover, but it has like a cut out in the dust jacket. So that's where you can see when it's on. And this also comes with, first of all, very nice thin pages, but it also comes with, oh, I have one and then I lost it. Where is it? There we are. Okay. Illustrations done by Tolkien. Let's see if I can find another one. Here is another one. Fangorn Forest. So I love the idea of having his own illustrations in the book because he was a very like, it's an interesting way to write books. Like he came up with the world and all of the details and the language and stuff before he wrote the books. So like to have him actually take something from his head and draw it and get to see it when you're reading the book is just very cool. I hope I hope I'm making sense. Anyway, this is a very thick boy, so I might actually, not gonna lie, get the ebooks or read them on Kindle Unlimited if they're on there instead of reading that edition, but I'm very excited to have it because <laughs> it's stunning. I'll just have to like keep track so I can actually see the illustrations at the same time. So those were my adult fantasy books and we're moving on to a little bit of adult sci-fi I think. I only have two. I cannot tell you what this is about other than there's something about a an arranged marriage between a woman and a ship and the ship is sentient and it's very weird. <laughs> but this is The Red Scholar's Wake by Elliot de Bodard and it's the Illumicrate edition so it has an exclusive cover. It's a colorway change. It has ombre edges that look like this. It has foiling on the naked cover, which looks like this. And it also has end papers that look like this in the front and different ones in the back that looks like this. Oh, plus I had a uh, assigned book plate that I put in the book. But other than that, I cannot tell you what this is about. So we're gonna put it away. I think I just realized that mine looks really bad in the bottom, but um, too late to do anything about it now. So, and then I got for Christmas Morningstar, which is the third book in the Red Rising trilogy. I will be getting this as the hard bag though. <laughs> Don't tell my sister, but I will. <laughs> I'm very thankful that she gave me this, don't get me wrong, it's just that I have the other two as hardbacks. So I'm that kind of person, you know, I just need the whole set to match, it's the thing. But I can't tell you much about Red Rising, sorry that I'm looking this way, it's because I can literally see it on my shelf, it's a habit I have. Other than we follow Darrow, who is a red, and that means that he's basically a slave. He's working to make Mars inhabitable, but the thing is, they have been lied to him and the other reds, and it's actually already ready for people to move to it. 
like people can already live on it. So what he does when he finds out is that he goes to this like tournament thing. And that's all I know. All I know is that the tournament thing is a little bit like the Hunger Games, but the premise is different obviously. So don't think the capital is set setting it up. <laughs> But, you know, the winner gets to become some kind of important person. <laughs> that sound is so specific. I can't give you more details than that, so do with that what you want. <laughs> and now we're moving into some mysteries. So for Christmas, I got the Inheritance Games books, all three of them, by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Or should I say all three, because there is a Hawthorne Brothers book coming out at some point this year. But this is about a girl who gets a letter that she is inheriting something, but she has to go to this house to go through some games and there's some brothers and stuff. That's all I know. I don't want to know more than that when I'm going into them. I just heard that they were very good, so I put the whole box on my wish list and I ended up getting them and I'm very happy that I that I have them in my collection now. I think I'm gonna have a very good time with them. I also got In My Dreams I Hold A Knife by Ashley Winstead which is about our lead girl who is meeting up with her six, it's the six friends or five other friends. Yes, 10 years after they have graduated it turns out that a girl died and the six friends might have some ties to this murder. So our lead girl is very set on figuring out who of them did it at this reunion. And yes, at least as far as I can understand and can remember. <laughs> I also got the newest book in the Truly Devious series, which is the fifth one. Sorry, I had to check. It's Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. I don't know what this trilogy is about, the new one. I only know Truly Devious, but as far as I can understand, the new trilogy doesn't actually have anything to do with Truly Devious. I think it even takes place in another... Oh, it's the same girl! I don't know what it's about though, so I'm gonna put it aside. I do know what Truly Devious is about, but that whole mystery is solved up in the... or is solved in the first three books, so this one doesn't have anything to do with it. But anyway. And then the last mystery book I got is Bunny, which I can't tell you what it's about either, actually. I just know that it's about, yeah, we call them bunnies because that is what they call each other. Seriously, bunny. I think this might also be a little bit horror, so I don't know. But I saw this at the store. I bought it at the store, actually, which I rarely do. I usually order all my books because it's really pricey to buy books at the store here. It's a whole thing. Books are very expensive in Denmark. But as you can probably tell, it's very pink and my eyes were like, mm, you're going home with me. <laughs> So I grabbed it and I took it home with me and now I have it, but I can't really tell you what it's about. But I've heard that it's very strange and that's kind of intriguing to me. So we'll see. I have three. These are kind of funny. So I have, no, four historical fiction books, but first of all, these are historical fantasy. They are the second and the third book in the Regency Fairy Tales series by Olivia Atwater. The first one is Half a Soul, but these are companion novels, so I can't really tell you what these are about, other than I believe there are some, it's historical fiction, but like mixed with, I would say it's historical romance, but mixed with fantasy, and there are fairies in it as well or in them. But as for the stories in these two, I don't know. I just enjoyed Half a Soul. I actually might have ordered these before I finished the book. So it's just, it's just lucky that I enjoyed Half a Soul, really. But I was confident that I was gonna love it. So I got these two, but I can't tell you what these individual stories are about though. Just know that Half a Soul. If those are anything like Half a Soul, they are super cute and whimsical and fantastical and they just have like a very good mix of historical fiction and romance and fantasy and it's, it's a good time. I also got Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore, which I've heard good things about and I'm trying to open myself up to historical romance a little bit this year, so I'm taking a chance on this one. But in this book, we follow our lead girl who is going to, what is it, Oxford University is one of the very first women who's actually been approved. That's, is that the word? Accepted into Oxford University. So she's trying to start a movement to make it possible for women to actually get educations. And one of the first people that she's trying to recruit for this movement is What's his name? Sebastian Devereux. Devereux? I feel like there's an accent missing or something. It says he's cold calculating and the most powerful duke in England. What happens though is that she's not supposed to be attracted to him, but as it turns out, she actually very much is. So that's what this book is about. Really like trying to open myself up to historical romance. So be patient with me, but we're gonna try. <laughs> 
And then, I don't actually know what this is about, but I got it in one of my Alcred boxes, and it's The Secret Garden by Frances Hodge... Hodgson Burnett. They do these collectibles in some of the boxes, so they completely redesigned the covers for classics. So, so far they have done Frankenstein and also Pride and Prejudice. I think this is the third one. I have loved the other two editions, so I'm excited to see what they're gonna do with the next one and also which one they choose. This seems like a very short book. I have actually, I don't really know much about The Secret Garden, so yeah, but very excited to have it anyway. I have all three, which is very satisfying to me, if I may be honest. But those were my historical fiction books, or historical romance, or whatever you want to call them. So we're moving on to contemporary. I have four this time. Let's start out with an Illumicrate edition, which is also a Christmas book, but showing it off anyway. It's Make You Mind This Christmas by Lucy Huxley Jones. So this has an exclusive cover. It also has red sprayed edges, like a nice dusty a dusty red and it also has very cute foiling on the naked cover plus it's also signed by Lissy Huxley Jones. This book is like fake dating with a brother of a girl that our lead girl is very much drawn to so it's like fake dating but with a twist and it happens over Christmas and there's a lot of stuff going on. I read this, didn't fully love it, but it was more like the writing style than the premise itself. And I, in my romances, just need a lot of tension between the characters. <laughs> like I just need them to like pine and long for each other, which I don't feel like they did unfortunately, but if you want to watch more about my opinion on that book, I did a Christmas readathon, which might be a little bit of a weird one to watch in January, but feel free to. Or February. I don't know. I also got Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake, which I actually can't tell you what it's about, but I'm reading it at the moment. All I know is that 30 pages into it, I'm not really loving it, but we'll see if that changes. On the back though, I will give you this. It says, Alone With You in the Ether is a contemporary love story like no other. Regan and Aldo allow us to explore the nature of love, what it means to be unwell, and how to face the fractures of ourselves and still love as if we're not broken. So, um, yeah. I will be exploring this a little bit more over the next couple of days, but I can't tell you what it's about right now. I also have Josh and Hazel's Guide to Fake Dating? To Not Dating! <laughs> I was like, F is it fake dating? Are they fake dating? No. To Not Dating. This is like a friends to lovers romance, which is not usually my thing. It's also by Christina Lauren, but because it's by Christina Lauren, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot, so... <laughs> I have it. And then I got for Christmas by one of my friends, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, which is an enemies to lovers work romance. And this was very hyped last year or the year before and I never got it. People are saying it's a bit like the Spanish love deception, which I loved. So I am super excited to read this at some point. And I also got Love and Other Words, which I don't actually know what it's about but have heard so insanely many good things about. Also by Christina Lauren, by the way. And then I also heard someone compare it to Every Summer After by Carly Fortune, which I gave five stars, so I am expecting major things from this, which is dangerous, but I feel like it's gonna live up to it, so I'm very confident that I'm gonna love this. So those were my contemporaries. I know that you didn't really get a lot of synopses for those, but sometimes I feel like for contemporary romances, just tell Telling you about the tropes in them is enough, you know? It is for me, so I hope you're on the same page as me. <laughs> and then next up I have some graphic novels, because I decided that 2023 I was really gonna get into, or I am gonna get into, graphic novels. It's not something that I feel like I know a lot about, and I've not read a lot of them, so I want to focus a little bit more on that this year. So for Christmas I got Death Note by Zugami Oba. This is the black edition, so it's volume one and two. It's also manga, by the way, so it's Japanese. But in this we follow a student who's very smart. He's an A student, so he's just azing everything. He's one of the, I think he's the, the first in the county or country or something, anyway. And one day this notebook, which is called a death note, falls to the ground and he sees it and picks it up. And this big creature shows up out of the blue in front of him. A very strange, horrific looking creature. Is it called it Nishigami? I can't remember what exactly what they call it, but anyway. It turns out that this notebook is, it's a death note, so that means he can write names into it while thinking on a phase and the person that he's thinking of will die. He can even write like the cause of death and stuff. And so it's about him 
playing around with this death note, killing criminals, and we get to see him kind of change from being this like A student who seems very nice to having a little bit of a god complex and what happens when humans get too much power. I'm halfway through this one, so I'm through volume one. It's very good, very much enjoying it. I also got Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo, which is a short story about the Darkling and him and his mother like years and years ago, before, long before Shadow and Bone. If you wanna see the style in this, it's very nice. I very much liked the style. I've already read it, but I can see myself rereading it at some point. I just really enjoyed the style. Also, it's a bit like, it's a bit sad, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but lovely. Oh wait, this has funky foil. And papers, by the way, yes, but also very nice foiling right here, yeah. And then I got Thanks by Sarah Anderson, finally. In short, this is about a werewolf and a vampire dating and what happens when the two of them date and what situations they're in. And yes, it's just funky and cute and I don't know, kind of quirky a little bit, yeah. I also got volume two and volume three of Monstras by Marjorie Liu because I really liked volume one. It's hard to explain what it's about because there's a lot of world building in it. Which one is this? this is volume two. I will show you the style though without spoiling anything. It's very art de- oh that's so adorable! <laughs> but um, it's very art deco. It's basically about like witches and humans, I think it is, or the arcana and witches fighting. There's a war. Our elite girl has some powers that were given to her by a god and she's dealing with those powers they're kind of hard to control and she's also on the search for one of her friends because she has been taken as a slave at some point and kind of run off and stuff so there's a whole thing going on but these are very cool I'm very much looking forward to going into these and seeing how she's handling those powers. I today actually got Watchmen by Ellen Moore which I have watched the movie and actually this is an unpopular opinion but I thought it was great <laughs> So I have uh, been eyeing this for a while and I'm very happy that I have it now. Kind of bought it for myself as a birthday present, I'm not gonna lie. Already started it, it's so good. Um, but I don't really know how can I summarize this. I just think like superheroes that are masked and someone's killing them and another of the superheroes is trying to figure out who's doing it. And there might be a lot of like secrets unraveled and stuff and Yes, a bit of a a bit of a mystery, a bit of a mystery vibe, a detective vibe, but with superheroes and morally gray characters or evil character. It's okay, it's good. <laughs> and then I also got from Alan Moore. I got this from my brother. He gave me From Hell, which is like murder mystery. Should I show this, you the styles actually now that I'm thinking about it? So, this is a bit more on the colorful side, like like this, but very gritty, very bloody, very violent, just like we like it. <laughs> and this, however, is more of like a murder mystery, but in the Victorian age. Uh, it has to do with Jack the Ripper, so we got some horror and some thriller and some mystery vibes in it. We have funky end papers in this one. This is the deluxe edition, so it's in color, which I know not everyone's gonna love for From Hell, but I think it's nice. So I am looking forward to reading this at some point. And this is literally like all the volumes in one book, which is super cool. Oh, it's so heavy as well. Anyway, and then <laughs> I got very excited. So I got volume two of Lore Olympus for myself as well. This is by Rachel Smith. It is, or Smythe. It is, or used to be a webtoon until it was released as, you know, an actual physical book and I loved volume one so much like it made me so happy while reading it so I basically bought I really tried to hold off until after my birthday but I just couldn't so I ended up buying volume two I want to show you the style without spoiling anything oh, I love them so much how can I not spoil it okay I'm gonna show you here so style is like very vibrant very watercolory colory I want to say almost like it's very dreamy and just it's very unique and I really adore it I adore the whole vibe and I'm so ready to read this but I also need to 
buy volume 3 because I know that if I can't read volume 3 at the, like as soon as I'm done reading it I'm gonna be so sad. But this is a story, a retelling of Hades and Persephone. So we follow Persephone, also known as Kor, when she's introduced to the world of the gods which means a lot of partying and it's wild. There's a lot going on with the with the gods. She's kind of been kept away from them for a while by her mother Demeter but now she's been introduced into it and of course something has to go wrong on her first night out and she ends up in the underworld with Hades and so they're very taken with each other and it's about them and it's cute but also touches on sensitive subjects so just keep that in mind look up some trigger warnings but it's cute and I can recommend so and then lastly I got this uh, yesterday <laughs> I buy a lot of presents for myself no one will make me feel bad about it because it's just the way it is. But I got Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, but in the Barnes & Noble edition. So this has funky end papers, gilded edges that are silver, and very funky cover, and also back. And it has other stories in it as well. It also has Through the Looking Glass, and it has Sylvia and Bruno, Sylvia and Bruno concluded, Phantasmagoria, some rhymes and stuff, a lot of other, some other stories. And I have the Jane Austen seven novels as well in the Barnes and Noble edition. And I also have Stephen King's three novels collection, which I also believe is the Barnes and Noble. So I just felt like it was about time to add another one to my collection. So I was standing at the store with this one in my hand and the Beauty and the Beast collection in my other hand, which I still think is gonna be my next one because it's cute, it's pink. <laughs> and I was like, mom, which one should I get? And she was like, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And here she is. So she's cute. She is colorful. She has a pink ribbon bookmark. And I am looking forward to reading these at some point. So that was my last book. This video turned out to be so long anyway, didn't it? I've been sat here for an hour and a half. It is no longer my birthday. <laughs> But I will try to at least link to all these books in the description down below. But if there are no links, it's because they couldn't fit in there. So um, yeah, I hope you found something in this video that you thought was interesting and maybe you wanted to look into. I am so nervous to try to fit all these onto my shelves, but I'm going to do my best. Wish me good luck. But that's all I got for you guys today. So there'll probably be a book haul again in like February or March because I have zero self-control. And it's a problem, but I'm working on it. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, but also videos like readathons and wrap ups and TBR videos, bookish unboxings, and all the other booktube stuff, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button. But I'm gonna leave you to it for now. I need to stretch my back and my legs because I'm an old woman <laughs> as of today, so I can't feel them anymore. I need to do something about it. So I'm gonna leave it be. I hope you enjoyed this video though, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Oh, you know. mm.